evening, everyone. On behalf of IGNC and CATS, I welcome all the speakers and each one of you to the Play Story session of Festival of Places 2020-21, jointly hosted by Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts, IGNC New Delhi, and CATS. The Festival of Places is an initiative of CATS, a not-for-profit organization working in the area of heritage conservation, management, and advocacy since 2001. We at CATS feel very strongly about the dismal state of public spaces in our cities, and firmly believe change in the way we think, talk, and use public spaces can only begin at the grassroots by creatively engaging people with places and empowering them to make a difference to the places and spaces around. The Festival of Places is an idea born out of the spirit of volunteerism to come together, collaborate, co-create, and celebrate places that nurture health, happiness, and foster community living. Moreover, the festival aims to help discover the much overlooked human dimension of places. The main highlight of the festival this year is Play Stories, a series of online storytelling sessions that help understand the hidden dimensions, multiple interpretations, and varied memories associated with places, highlighting their distinct characteristics, as well as unraveling the bond that people have with them, a connection that lives through their experiences. The storytelling sessions by professional scholars and students from diverse fields focused on public spaces have been planned around the idea of exploring memory in places. Renowned as the cradle of Indian cricket, Shivaji Park was established in 1925 during the British rule. Known as Mahim Park until 1927, it was renamed after the 17th century Maratha king, Shivaji Maharaj. Besides being a venue for gatherings, the park has space for sports, children's playground, park for elderly, a scout's pavilion, and a Hindu temple. Today, we will unravel the layers of history, memory, and activities that thrive in the park. The title of today's play story is Shivaji Park, and the theme for the session is Greens as Social Spaces of Convergence. Our play storyteller for the session, Ms. Sakshi Pavaskar, will be taking us around Shivaji Park and share her memories with us. The place expert for the session, Ms. Dewey Kartrekar, will dive into her memories of the place and will also critically examine its social spaces that draw, draw people from all walks of life for recreation, relaxation, and rejuvenation. Our play storyteller, Sakshi Pavaskar, is an 18-year-old currently studying at DICE VFS Mumbai, uh, school for the film production course. Films in general have always fascinated her. She dreams of becoming an actor. Cinematography is what she enjoys the most and would like to explore the field more in the future. Our place expert, Dewey Kartrekar, is an architect and urban designer. She studied architecture, uh, at architecture at Sir JJ College of Architecture, Mumbai, and master's in urban design at School of Planning and Architecture, New Delhi. Post her master's, she has worked in master planning and urban design projects in India. She is now working as a landscape and urban designer at Arcadis in a multidisciplinary environment on varied scales of landscape, master planning, urbanism projects of the UK region for the past few years. The scale of the projects she has worked on range from city center regeneration master plans and high street developments to planning applications. Sustainability and resilience is a growing area of interest, and she is inclined towards multidisciplinary learning. Dewey was born and brought up in the heart of Mumbai, Shivaji Park, Dadar and owes a lot, large part of her interest in urban spaces and design to the mixed-use neighborhood of Dadar and the multifaceted Shivaji Park that she grew up in. She was the winner of the gold medal for a competition entry on Gendering the City, hosted by Sir JJ College of Architecture in 2011, that addressed making public spaces in the city of Mumbai gender egalitarian, a design competition that was judged by the authors of the book Why Loiter, Women and Risk on Mumbai Streets. A lot of the proposed interventions in her design strategy in the competition were inspired by learnings and experiences from Shivaji Park. We will now begin our conversation around Shivaji Park, and I invite Sakshi to please present her play story. Sakshi, you are on mute. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yes, you are. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Sakshi Pavaskar, and today I will be talking about a place that's very, very close to my family's and my heart. Uh, we emotionally connect a lot to this place and the place of Shivaji Park, of course. Uh, I am extremely glad that I've gotten this platform to kind of share my experience, share my family experience and talk about the park. I feel so proud to kind of, you know, be on this platform and be able to share so many things with all of y'all today. Uh, so I will be starting with presenting my film to y'all now. I'll share screen. Yeah, please. Yeah. 
Um, just give me a second. Uh, is it visible? Yes, it is. I'll just play it. Just like let me know if uh, the yeah. audio is audible. Hi, I'm Sakshi. And today I'm here to talk about one of the most iconic parks in Mumbai and a place very close to my heart. Since that's where my father grew up and most of my family still resides in the same neighborhood, Shivaji Park. It is situated in the center of the city, Dadar, and was built in 1925 by the Bombay Municipal Corporation. The park had been named after the legendary 17th century warrior king of the religion, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Well, apparently for the first two years after it was built, it was called Mahim Park, which was from 1925 to 1927. But 1927 being the tercentenary year of Shivaji Maharaj's birth was when everyone demanded for the park to be named after him. The Congress cooperator and Gandhian freedom Avantika by Gokhale were the ones who Sakshi, we can't hear your video. It still has been integral to the political gatherings of the local party, Shiv Sena, and has also witnessed numerous other political rallies. The Shiv Sena founder and chief, Bal Thakre, addressed Senex every year at the spot on the Shara. It happened for 40 consecutive years. Uh, As all of us must have understood by now. The... Yeah, is it not audible? No, uh, just make the screen full screen. And, yeah, uh, but, uh, was it not audible because I'd shared the computer sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is. It is, right? Okay. Yeah. Ground is obviously exceedingly dear to the Sena and has been a witness to every twist and turn in its tumultuous history. It also holds an emotional and cultural significance for locals, as many Marathi plays staged at Dadar Shivaji Mandir trace their roots to this ground where popular playwriters wrote their works. The place surrounding the park incidentally also became famous by the same name, Shivaji Park. The region has gained fame and prosperity, especially in the last. 60 to 70 odd years. Prior to that, the place was also a part of the Mahim Bay. We're not done here though. Another fun fact about the park that made it insanely popular was that for its cricket academies, like those of the late Anna Vedya and Ramakant Atsrekar, which produced several international cricketers for India. It's been a mecca of Mumbai cricketing world and is the nursery of Indian cricket. It has produced 21 international players. Some popular names that have been trained for cricket here are the legendary Sachin Tendulkar, Sunil Gavaskar, Sanjay Manzrekar, and so many more. After 85 years of basking in glory, as a much sought after public spot, the Shivaji Park was declared silent zone in 2010. I know, what even? The busiest place turning into a silent zone does sound oddly upsetting, but apparently the petitioners had cited several points, such as disturbance of the audio has gone according to the civic rules 
such an area fell under the ambit of a silent zone even after all the drama that it went through in 2010 and after some people still fail to stand by the rules which is so awful now talking about the physicality of the park as you enter from the most prominent entrance gate to the park which is on the east side intended only for the pedestrians a sculpture of meena tai thakre late wife of the shiv sena leader bal thakre has been placed at this entrance while on the western side of the park there's a grand statue of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj one of the very few statues in which he is shown without having drawn out his sword instead shivaji is shown simply leading the way with his arm outstretched just next to the statue is the shriman bara sahib thakre smriti sthal which is a memorial of bara sahib thakre it is at the spot of where bara sahib thakre was cremated the open maidan is flanked around its edge by a katta a simple continuous low curb edging that forms a makeshift seat it is a popular hangout spot for young and old alike and oh what possibilities it affords for human interaction those who have lived here in this neighborhood but moved away still feel the sense of ownership to come back to shivaji park and shoot the breeze on the katta is like returning home i mean at least that's how my family and i have always felt about it the nostalgia felt there is like no other it is one of the only parks in mumbai that is not fenced off with a barrier or a wall which is what makes it so unique from rest of the parks here the paved walkway around this perimeter is crowded with joggers and people taking walks the maidan area covers 27907 acres more than half of which is occupied by 31 tenants the largest being clubs such as the shivaji park gymkhana and the bengal club and right next to that is the maharashtra state kabaddi association the remaining part of the ground and open spaces is available to the public for sports and other activities other structures dotting the periphery of the grounds include the samarth vyam mandir which is a gymnasium shivaji park nagrik sangh which was established in 1947 a children's playground a park for the elderly called ai azoba udyan or grandparents park the scouts pavilion a hindu temple dedicated to ganesh and a community library the walkway is lined with large rain trees my dad aditya pavaskar has been brought up in the neighborhood of shivaji park and as unbelievable as it sounded to me when he told me this but my father and the legendary cricket player sachin tendulkar used to get trained together by mr ramkant tajrekar sir and my grandfather prabhakar pavaskar sachin and dad were really good friends while they were in college they'd often go to the famous bhelwala outside the park and would spend quality time there and sometimes they'd go to my grandmother's house and eat the food prepared by her as such and thoroughly enjoyed it he'd frequently go to their house for the food and to hang out with dad just the fact that such and tendul kar used to go to the house my grandmother still lives and used to also play cricket with my dad in shivaji park is always going to be beyond belief for me a very funny incident that my dad told me about training was that because he was one of the most mischievous students and he'd always get late for training he'd get punished by arch shaker sir to take 10 rounds of the ground without having to take a break in the middle other than playing cricket he'd also go to train for tennis swimming and in the monsoon as playing cricket wasn't allowed he'd train for football Every year on the day of the Shara there used to be a Ram Leela skit that my baba and dad used to attend and like the Shara the festival of Diwali was also greatly celebrated on the ground and until today our family make sure to keep one of the evenings while Diwali free so that we can all go to Shivaji Park and relive the times that we have spent there together we obviously don't burst crackers anymore but just sitting there looking around the park brings us so much joy Although since the last few years the increase in the noise pollution around the area has only worsened even after the BMC gave out its rule on how the area is a silent zone there are thousands of people who still don't seem to understand the harm it can cause to the residents and the domestic animals around the area especially in Diwali dogs and cats have four times higher sense of hearing than us humans they hear sounds humans cannot hear even the sound of crackers we may feel minute they hear it loud So the explosions of fireworks are not only more disturbing to them, but they can damage their hearing more severely. 
I really hope all of us become a little more considerate about the voiceless and our environment during our celebrations. Let's not try to hurt them for our happiness. The memories that I have made at Shivaji Park are always going to be extremely cherishable for my family and I. We've been indulging on the street food outside Shivaji Park until today from so many years and I don't think we can ever stop with it. This place has my whole heart forever. And no matter where I go to live in the future, I'll always carry it in my heart wherever I go. Thank you, Sakshi, uh, for sharing your very wonderful uh, memories with us of uh, you spending your time in Shivaji Park with your family. Now I will invite Jui to uh, please present her memories about Shivaji Park. Thank you, Urvashi. Uh, thank you for calling me here also because Shivaji Park is a place that's very, very close to my heart and I echo everything what Sakshi has already said. Uh, I... I would say that Shivaji Park is also the place that was my inspiration to get myself inclined to urban design because it it was a public space that showed me um, what all a public space can actually offer. So I'll share my screen and begin the presentation. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Yes. Okay, okay, fine. Um, yeah, so I'll be looking at uh, Shivaji Park through two lenses. One is through that of a resident and the other one is through that of an urban designer. And I'll be swapping between the two. Before I begin uh, with the presentation, I, I would like to take forward Sakshi's story uh, in the form of my memories. And I'm going to narrate a paragraph and account that demonstrates a slice of my personal life and how Shivaji Park has catered to my well-being and growth at every point and phase in my life. So I'll begin. My first birthday celebration took place at Shivaji Park Nagrik Sang Community Hall. I've played every day at the Samartha Vam Mandir in my childhood. I've learned to cycle at Shivaji Park. I've played at the children's play area of Shivaji Park and been coached for table tennis at the Shivaji Park Gymkhana. I've been coached for badminton at the Municipal Employees Club of Shivaji Park and I've had my birthday celebrated by friends at Shivaji Park during college days. There have been numerous exhibitions like the Know Your Army exhibitions at Shivaji Park that I've witnessed, the Independence Day parade and flag hoisting as well, of course, peace rallies and even paying homage to events that paid homage to the martyrs of 2611 attacks. I've heard and seen political rallies at Shivaji Park of most parties, so many that I can remember hearing speeches that happened at no decibel limits in the park, come and hit my ears at home with the breeze, before they were even broadcast on TV. This was before Shivaji Park was declared a silent zone. I've seen, I've stargazed at Shivaji Park and seen the fervor of Shivaji Park when India won the Cricket World Cup in 2011, post which Sachin retired. This, that was an event in history when Shivaji Park streets were jubilant and the celebration on the streets leading to Shivaji Park and within it was an, of a magnitude that I had never seen before. I've seen music performances at Shivaji Park on various festive occasions, the Ambedkar Jayanti events in the park and the mood around when Bayasaheb Thakre passed away. What more, I've seen Shiv Sena Bhavan being redeveloped and the Kohinoor mill changed from a G plus one mill to a 60 story Kohinoor, Kohinoor skyscraper that stands there now. Witnessed Ramlila as well as the Zanta Raja, which is a play based on the life of Shivaji, directed by the legendary historian Baba Sahib Purandare, who passed away just a few weeks ago. I have had friends from all parts of the city and country come and meet me at Shivaji Park, eat in the Vada Pao of Shivaji Park and the Tibbs Frankie uh, as a ritual on my evening rounds. I've literally seen the place grow and it has seen me grow. Most recently, uh, I have seen a lifeless Shivaji Park through the pandemic. I take my evening walks at Shivaji Park when I'm in Mumbai and it's my stress buster and heart and soul. I've seen it in all seasons and avatars and so what I say here is still going to be less as compared to my experiences and layers that this place has. 
so i'll go forward uh, we are we are looking at shivaji park and exploring greens as social spaces of convergence so this is a commemorative pillar that is present at shivaji park which shows um, that that when shivaji park was renamed it was renamed in uh, 1927 on on the tercentenary of shivaji maharaj uh, it is a melting pot of culture sport politics and well being i think it is literally a space of socio cultural convergence that is a cultural heritage which is which is intangible and tangible cultural heritage as well as the physical convergence of of the neighborhood it is the center of one of mumbai's oldest and most vibrant neighborhoods that's called dadar mumbai 400028 so uh, i would like to talk about shivaji park here as a third place because i think that it is a third place where which gives you and allows you to gives you space and allows you to be yourself for for any kind of people so any kind of people it's it's inclusive for any kind of people when it comes to shivaji park i think three things that come to my mind are that it is inclusive it is democratic and it blurs boundaries uh, when i talk about shivaji park i will talk about it as as a precinct as a whole because uh, it is the precinct that converges at shivaji park and makes it what it is it is the collective energy of the dadar neighborhood which is known as mumbai's most oldest and most vibrant neighborhoods why it has become such an important public space which is both at neighborhood level as well as city level uh, there are various reasons for that uh, here you can see the map of the seven islands of mumbai and uh, the mahim island which was one of them uh, and shivaji park which was placed uh, at, on, on the lower end of the island that is which which was on the lower mahim island um on the city level map uh, it is placed over here and when you zoom in into the ward level map which is this uh, it was this was the earlier extent of shivaji park which was called uh, the mahim woods there were various reasons for this area to emerge the first one being that uh, the outbreak of plague in bombay and bad living conditions uh, had prompted the need for planned development in bombay and therefore there was decongestion of the native town down south that was happening uh, there was a belief of that there was a lack of sanitary conditions uh, in the overpopulated city uh, and therefore there was the setting up of the bombay city improvement trust that happened in 1998 as a result of which um, the various town planning schemes were planned around bombay and uh, this was the estate scheme or the shivaji park mahim scheme was one of the 33 town planning schemes that uh, were planned around bombay and it came into existence uh, in around the 1930 the need for housing within walking distance of the mills was another reason for the emergence of the area uh, the uh, obviously marathi speaking population worked in in the in the mills and therefore a predominantly marathi speaking community evolved around the in the precinct of shivaji park uh, this is uh, this, this is a very old picture of shivaji park uh, of the dadar precinct uh, from 1933 from the bombay gazette year where you can see that um, the scheme schemes had started to come up one of uh, one of them being the estate scheme so you can see the major roads being re laid around shivaji park this is the extent of shivaji park that eventually got demarcated so um the bmc was set up the bit was set up and planned residential suburbs shivaji park the residential precinct of shivaji park being one of them uh, began to come up uh, in in this in this suburban area as it was at that point in time Uh, the bombay town plan planning act then came into existence and dadar was opened as an area for settling of the native population uh B the bombay city improvement trust's first plans uh, were the dadar matunga east matunga and sayan uh, schemes that came into place and therefore there was a demand to develop this place as well which which lay on the the western side of uh, mumbai and and therefore uh, the mahim woods was was proposed to be developed into the shivaji park mahim scheme 
the wider connectivity and precinct evolution uh, wa was and how Shivaji Park was uh, very strategically placed within that within that uh, that plan plan. So uh, there was the Cadell Road, which which is the Veer Savarkar Mark now, and the Lady Jamshedji Road, which was the which was uh, again. These were the main main two arteries that ran north south uh, in Mumbai. They were proposed as, as both both as hundred feet wide road that con to connect the city north south, and um, the these were also the roads that got people from the airport to the into the uh, center of the city. Uh, the development of Shivaji Park region was uh, was monitored by carefully monitored by the renowned city engineer N. B. Modak, who also lived in Shivaji Park. And architects uh, G. B. Bhatre and many others were instrumental in giving Shivaji Park sh the shape to the precinct. The purposes it served right since the beginning was that it was a grassy meadow initially used by traders, performers as a camping site and meeting place to, for locals to celebrate festivals. And then eventually later on, when it was open to public, it became a space for socio-political and religious gatherings, ranging from Shiv Sena Congress rallies to celebration of a lot of festivals like Dashera, Durga Puja, Ganpati, to venue for food festivals and foremost, obviously, the cradle of Indian cricket and sport. These are <clears throat> certain nodes, landmarks, streets, and imageable elements in the culturally vibrant neighborhoods of Dadar. I've, I've put in this map because I think that they are contributions to the socio-cultural life of Shivaji Park. Uh, and, and this is how they all converge into Shivaji Park which is the focal point of the whole precinct. This is Shiv Sheda Bhavan, the Shivaji Mandir, the Plaza Cinema, um, the Dadar Sarvajanik Vachanale, the Portuguese Church, the Sharrasram School also where Sachin uh, was, a, was a student of, uh, the Amar Hinda Mandal where, which was a place of, uh, where people used to give speeches and hear, and listen to speeches of, of, uh, of, in civic importance. Then uh, the Senapati Bapat statue, the Sena, Sena, who, Senapati Bapat being a person who was very instrumental in the Sanyukta Maharashtra movement that uh, led to a free Maharashtra. The Malmohan Vidya Mandir and the Savarkar Sadan, where Sa Malmohan Vidya Mandir being an important um, institution of education within the Shivaji Park precinct, and the Savarkar Sadan, where uh, Veer Savarkar himself lived also is lies within Shivaji Park. These are some of the landmarks. So this is the Savarkar Sadan, uh, the Modak bungalow. Uh, N.V. Modak was the first for the was the person who was very instrumental in um, in in the development of the Shivaji Park precinct as well as uh, he was the first he was the person instrumental in uh, getting uh, getting the instrumental for the DP development plan of Mumbai of 1960. Uh, this is Sudhir Farke, who is a musician. This is the place where he lived. Uh, so there are various culturally important uh, personalities who resided in Shivaji Park as well as came were associated with Shivaji Park. This is Shardashram school, the Balmon Vidya Mandir, Shivaji Mandir, Plaza Cinema, Dadar Sarvajanik Vachanala. So all of these lead, lending to um, the culturally cultural uh, vibrance of the neighborhood. Now zooming into Shivaji Park, um, these are multiple activities. I would say this is the Shivaji Park precinct. These are the multiple activities uh, for varied users within the park. Um, and the precinct was planned such that there was the Veer Savarkar ma mark or the old cattle road on the western side of Shivaji Park, uh, It was uh, which was widened in 1916, earlier called the Mahim Bazaar Road, and the Lady Jamshedji Road, which was, uh, which was built in 1846. Shivaji Park was very strategically positioned between these two major arteries as a result of which it became a place which was easily accessible uh, to public. The way the precinct was developed is uh, that these were the major two arteries. There were two, art there were two major roads coming from, uh, from the Dadar station, which was an important interchange station. One was uh, the NC Kerkar road that was 
coming in radially into Shivaji Park and the other was the Ranade Road that came into Shivaji Park. Um, and, uh, further after that, there were ring roads that were laid around Shivaji Park after the, the limits of Shivaji Park were, were established. There were two ring roads, the inner ring road and the outer ring road. And there were around 200 plots that were planned around, around Shivaji Park. Uh, and that became the Shivaji Park residential precinct, which was predominantly an art deco uh, pre precinct. So the architectural style of the precinct was art deco and it had certain regulations as to uh, what, kind, wh what kind of facade you should have, what kind of uh, the, the setback that you should have within the plot, etc. Uh, there are around seven entrances to Shivaji Park, a total of seven entrances. Uh, the main entrances or the public entrances come from uh, where from, from the eastern side and from, of course, from the Dada station. Uh, and the private entrances are at the back. So you will see that during kind of uh, during festivals, you will see more of a public area here and a lot of crowd coming in from here, whereas the VIP entrance is from the backside from Veer Savarkar Mark. That is how the zoning and the accesses of the scheme were even designed so that to even regulate uh, the crowds that come into Shivaji Park. Um, <clears throat> then there were very there are the various um, multiple activities and amenities for varied users within the park. I would say these are nodes of activities within the park that are strung together by the one kilometer walk uh, that 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 you can take around Shivaji Park. These amenities being the Scout Pavilion, the Bengal Club set up in 1922, the Kali Temple set up again in 1922, the Udyan Ganesh Mandir set up in 1963, the Shivaji statue that uh, was set up that was commemorated in 1966 post the uh, Sanyukta Maharashtra movement, the Bayasaheb Thakre Memorial that obviously came up in 2012. Uh, the Shivaji Park Nagrik Sangh that came up in 1947 because people began to converge at, at this place as a community space uh, for, for discussing various things post-independence. Then the Samartha Vam Mandir, which was there since 1925, which, which led to, which was, which was uh, lending to uh, the sport, uh, uh, lending to making or uh, bringing about helping in the development of Indian sports like Malkham. Uh, the Shivaji Park Gymkhana that was earlier uh, set up in 1909 moved to Shivaji Park in 1925 and of course became uh, an important landmark. The children's play area Open Chiv and Ajia Zuba Udyan came up, came up later. But the important uh, institutions have been, that have taken Shivaji Park to the, to the, to the international level uh, have been the Samartha Vam Mandir, the uh, Shivaji Maharashtra State Kabaddi Association and the Shivaji Park Jimkhana. A few other amenities on the on the seaside, on the on the western side of Shivaji Park are also important, which being the Mayor's Bungalow, which came up in 1962, the Savarkar Smarak, which uh, was set up in 1989 in in memory of uh, Veer Savarkar, uh, the Mahatma Gandhi Memorial Swimming Pool set up in 1952, the Sa Sanyukta Maharashtra Dalan, which was set up in memory of the freedom fight uh, for uh, an independent Maharashtra based on linguistic uh, lines, the Municipal Employees Sports Club and the Shivaji Park Crematorium as well, because <clears throat> that being an important area because uh, of a lot of known personalities were, were have been known to be cremated there, including Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, as a result of which this place has been uh, attracting a lot of people or followers of uh, Ambe Dr. Ambedkar uh, on every year. So these are some pictures of uh, the multiple of the of the amenities that are within the park, Samartha Vam Mandir, which is important for taking Malkham to an international level. Uh, then the Shivaji Park, Jim Khana, the Aji Azuba Udyan, the, the children's play area and the open gym. The Udyan Ganesh Mandir 
and which which also has a uh, varied cultural and uh, festivals at at various occasions so this is on holi this is on 31st of december at night this is uh, on <clears throat> a diwali performance there is also a basalt piyav or a drinking fountain on which is like a heritage fountain also that is there as an amenity on the on the periphery of the ground <clears throat> then coming to the shivaji park nagrik sang uh, which is a community hall uh, the bal thakre memorial the maharashtra state kabaddi association which has also taken kabaddi to an international level uh, and of course the shivaji statue which came into existence in 1966 other than that there is the bengal club the kali temple the uh, maharashtra scouts pavilion which is also uh, an important place where a lot of events are held throughout the year so what sets shivaji park apart as a as a public space i think uh, it, it it's the multi dimensionality or uh, or the multiplicity of activities that is that are possible within the park and how many how so many things can coexist harmoniously at at one single time is what uh, i think makes it a very successful uh, public space it is a multi dimensional third space uh, there are parallel stories running and si simultaneously occurring at any time it is a space that is inclusive so it is a space that breaks barriers of caste class gender and age so everyone feels accepted and safe here there isn't there wouldn't be anybody who would say that i don't feel accepted at shivaji park it is a space that is gender egalitarian so there is there are always eyes on the street as jane jacob says um i i would never feel unsafe as Shiv at shivaji park there because there's always something or the other happening and the park probably rests only for 3 hours from 12 at midnight to 3 in the morning i it is also an adaptive flexible space uh, which means that it is used for various events across the year um so i'll come to that later when i talk about ephemeral urbanism and adaptive reuse i think it breaks boundaries in terms of having a porous interface which is uh, the most love shivaji park katta so there is there are gates definitely to the park uh, that that allow for a vehicular entry where required but it is still the the only non gated park in mumbai which which sets an active inviting interface with the immediate surrounding buildings that is one success of uh the shivaji park katta as a as a porous interactive interface and of course uh green spaces are central for contributing to increased well being both physical and mental and therefore it has definitely improved uh the quality of life of the people that it has served both at neighborhood level and at city level this so so the coming to the roles that it has played in our lives first is as a cultural space shivaji park has been as as i said uh coming coming together of so many cultures uh it has it, it hosts diwali it hosts it hosts durga puja it hosts holi it it is it has um various cultural events uh that are hosted there throughout the year uh two of its two of its nodes are named after musicians one being the vasant being musician vasant desai and the other one being c ramchandra then coming to shivaji park as a political space which is well known i think it is an active political space it has been an active political space right since the freedom struggle of india pre and post independence uh it has been a political space and the battleground of the sanyukta maharashtra movement that lasted from 1955 to 1960 leading to a separate state of maharashtra with bombay as its capital that was a very important milestone in it being uh, in its its uh role as a political space establishment of the shiv sena on in 1966 uh, of course numerous rallies political rallies being hosted there after that uh the establishment of mns and most recently the swearing in of chief minister uddhav thakre in 2019 then coming to of course the cradle of sports and fitness where 
uh, these are some pictures of it of of everyday pictures of Shivaji Park as a place where sports where it's the cradle of sports and fitness Malkam being one of them uh, this is again an image of uh, a recruitment into the exam for recruitment into the police force so all, that is also happening at at this space the most important one i think is that greens are spaces of a paramount impo importance for mental and physical being because it allows us to reclaim our core identity uh, everybody can be whatever they want to at at shivaji park it is a place where uh, everyone can have their own space bubble in that incredibly public space so it is definitely a stress buster and a breathing space for a lot of people who use it on an everyday basis then coming to ephemeral urbanism and adaptive reuse where uh, shivaji park has been this is a cricket match that was host that was hosted in shivaji park uh, it was an india pakistan cricket match where hundreds of people came together to actually watch the match so uh, that was an event of uh, ur urbanism um, then coming to the the weekly market on one of the radial roads of shivaji park so that was that is again an important uh, f important um, instance of ephemeral urbanism uh, in the park and just around the roads leading into the park political rallies of course uh, musical performances as well and of course even adaptive reuse in the sense that the scout hall was uh, used in, during this pandemic as a dedicated covid healthcare facility so it has been used it has been used in different ways by different people throughout its history um then coming to porous boundaries interface and accesses how the katta has been a porous boundary and, and an active interface uh, which which is also which can also be called it's called by many as the living room of the of the city or live it's the living room of the city so uh, the, you can see a lot of activities happening on this katta you can see people chatting on the katta music performances happening on the katta people uh, actually earning their livelihoods on the katta so uh, it it has it has been a social space and a sp space that has even given livelihoods to people so uh, as compared to other parks in mumbai which are either which are fenced this is an important uh, element of urban design where you have an active interface between a public space and then the the road outside and then the private space uh, after that uh, which which actually blends it very well so that so that you have a very seamless public space this is just a section of the seamless public space that uh, that that shivaji park is so you have the maidan then the promenade then the katta which is which has numerous activities happening on it then the promenade again the then the inner ring road and then coming and then the uh, shivaji park residential precinct which also being Uh, an art deco residential precinct allows for a seamless porous uh, interface and a transition between that private space into this public space um of course this this transition is kind of kind of going to reduce slowly as redevelopment happens because there are go there are 12 storied and more uh, plus towers that are coming up in the immediate vicinity of shivaji park so uh, that that feature of having people looking over onto the park through balconies is not going to be there in the future but this is how it it has been a successful public space seamless public space up up until now this is the immediate typology of and the scale of the inner ring road uh, that lends to the character and charm of the public space so these are some of the uh, lovely art deco buildings that overlook that form an edge to the shivaji park uh, shivaji park as a public space also the importance of having uh, the the bombay city improvement trusts uh, rules for the for the art deco precinct which had which said that uh, the upper part of the 
boundary wall would be would have grills rather than be it being a a, a compound wall which is uh, which is entirely completely uh, blocking the view from 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 the buildings to the to the public space so that is uh, that has also lent character to the public open space so um, i think uh, shivaji park has been a place that has been an inspiration to a lot of people uh, i am coming back to the point that there have there have been therefore all these these factors that uh, th these factors such as the 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 neighborhood of of shivaji park itself the activities that are happening within the park and the interface of the park with the outside that together make shivaji park a successful public space it is not something that can be talked of in isolation and therefore it ne it's the entire it's the entire precinct that comes together at shivaji park to make it such a successful public space so yeah these are three modes through the pandemic that i had taken uh and i am posing a, a question now which says that i can we have more such public places across across the city and the country for uh for public to for the public for the citizens to enjoy thank you urvashi that was my presentation thank you dewi it was a very very interesting and very uh, you know personal narrative also that you shared about your connection with the place and it is very interesting to see this very beautiful space in the heart of the city and how it has uh, you know grown over the years um, there is a comment in from the participants uh, uh, which says uh, minakshi bhagat is saying interestingly drawn presentation and story around shivaji park uh, thank you for sharing a life around it so um Uh, Jui, you have very interestingly talked about uh, this katta as a very uh, important feature in uh, creating a lively and a, a safe uh, public space. Uh, so, uh, you know, public parks have the potentials to act as equalizers in the city, uh, bringing together people from all walks of life. So, uh, to what extent uh, do you see this happening in Shivaji Park, and how does it, you know, uh, unfold? you mentioned that it draws people from you know yeah it 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 draws people from all walks of life because you will see that uh, uh, there are people from of all professions who are actually coming uh, who are actually coming there and sitting on the katta and discussing things so an example being that uh, narayan murthy uh, narayan murthy uh, got the idea of the for the formation of uh, infosys as a company sitting on the shivaji park katta so that is an important it, those are the kind of stories that that come into place when you talk about the shivaji park katta um you you will see uh, it's it's people coming from every kind of profession who who come and sit on the katta so it doesn't matter who the person is what the profession of the person is everybody is just equal at that place everybody is included in that place and he can just use the place and be himself and be what he wants to at in that place so i think yes in that way it is an equalizer uh, sachi uh, would you like to comment comment on that and your personal experience of how you know you have seen uh, people from uh, different uh, communities and Strata coming together and uh, enjoying the space. Yeah, first of all, I would I would really like to thank Zoe, ma'am, because I feel like today I've learned so many things about the park that I honestly had no idea about, and I don't think it would have been put in better words than this. So I am very thankful to you for kind of you know speaking about it. Uh, as Zoe, ma'am said about people being very accepting, I feel exactly the same about. uh the residents that have been living in shivaji park i feel like everybody is so united and right now like in today's generation it's very rare for people to kind of you know come together sit talk about life it's extremely rare especially in a public place coming together and kind of you know sharing your experiences i feel like it just i mean the place where i live now i don't see that happening i mean we all live in our apartments and everything and you know there's no scope of kind of people coming together and 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 inter and uh, interacting and when i see my dad every time he go back every time he goes back to shivaji park i still see him interacting with his friends there and i still 
kind of and even when i go when i personally go there i feel like everybody over there is just so warm everybody actually wants to make an effort to get to know you they are very uh, accepting as zui ma'am said and that is what i love the most about shivaji park and that is what ke- still keeps us connect to that connected to that place because everybody is just so united It's yeah all- so i also think that uh, that space bubble that we talked about where you can just be yourself in that place yeah. uh, it's like there are lots of activities happening around you but you can still be yourself exactly. at that place another thing is even though you can be yourself you can still go and interact with somebody else and on a random topic so that is something that that space actually offers you absolutely so the spirit of the place is such that you can just be yourself there right yeah and when i was shooting for this assignment i still remember i met this really kind lady her name is mrs desh pande and i ha- i actually sa- i I've, i've i never met this lady i met her over there for the first time and uh, i remember sitting there and talking to her for like 15 to 20 minutes and she was telling me about how she uh, feeds the stray dogs over there since yeah. the last 20 years she's been doing yeah. that so i actually sat down and spoke about all of it and i told her that you know like even i really want to kind of do something similar for the stray animals over here because i mean you know it i mean that the, like they can't speak they don't have their own voice so we could kind of come together and help them all out so we we kind of just sat down and spoke about it for like 15 20 minutes and i didn't even and i honestly personally i have like the social anxiety like i can't i can't very freely go and talk to people but i don't know what it is in the air in shivaji park i i i don't know what it was i just went and i started talking to her because i saw her feeding so many stray dogs over there she was feeding around 20 to 30 stray dogs over there and i saw her and i went to her and i actually spoke to her which is actually like which is so surprising for me myself because i don't do that and the people over there make you feel so welcome and so warm and uh, yeah that's that's what i love the most about the park honestly the people there uh palash also has raised his hand uh, palash would you unmute yourself and ask your question yeah i think uh, excellent presentations both sakshi and uh, uh ajuhi i think uh, in fact uh, all of us know how many uh, parks all across the country in various settlements we would have uh, actually created uh it is you know so heartening to see how uh we have such a model as shivaji park which actually connects not only with the uh, stories of the stalwarts uh whether it is tendulkar gavaskar and the uh, uh i think the narayan murthy but we point that you know you talk, spoke of a space bubble within the public space so i think that uh is something which is uh, which should be available to us uh across any uh, you know park as a public space so uh, in fact i have a couple of questions one uh, i i have myself grown up in a park which is of course in jaipur and uh, i can echo a lot of these things which you actually uh, spoke of however the uh, the institutional mechanism i think uh, uh which actually drives this uh uh development and then of course uh the spirit actually uh, which allows for interaction uh at various levels without any discrimination is something i think uh, which needs to be infused uh across uh various parts uh in the country the i think the second so i i would like to ask that question of juhi and sakshi as to uh what do they feel about uh, whether you know there is uh, the, the what has been the distinctive uh, factor whether governance uh, has been or whether it is the community engagement which actually uh, was enabled by uh, a set of factors which actually enabled it so to make it so distinctively uh, uh, basically uh unique uh yeah so what i can say about that is that uh 
Shivaji Park is a park that is open for all. It is it is it is within a residential precinct, but uh, the residents do not say that people from outside the precinct should not come here. Uh, that is one thing. Uh, it's it's a lot. Uh, I mean, you can see at, at other places there could be resident welfare organizations, etc., that kind of fence off parks and allow only residents to use them. But here it's not like that. The park is maintained by the Mumbai Municipal Corporation, so there is political will in actually maintaining and keeping the park the way it is. But it is also open to. Uh, people from all parts of the city and the country so there is there is no barrier as to uh, who can come into the park any any person from any profession of any economic status of any um, of of en from anywhere in the country can come and uh, come and use the facilities in the park so uh, of course like the Sh shivaji park gymkhana etc have got membership etc but but other than that um samartha vam mandir or or the kabaddi association or the nagrit sang they are all meant for common people to come and use the space so uh, there are that that is what the park also provides it's providing multiple it's actually providing the opportunity for multiple activities activities to participate in so that is also an important uh, reason for the park being a success if if yeah. the if the park kind of gives you those institutions which which are inclusive and open for public to come and use them then automatically the park will definitely become a more a place that is used by more people it's welcoming there's no barrier on who comes in and who goes out yeah, no, I think I think this is very important because, you know, most parks would say uh, children cannot play cricket and you can't, uh, you know, get dogs or... Uh, so I think some of these things which uh, uh, I think even uh, the fact that uh, there is a crematorium, there is a, you know, a lot of uh, activity thrown in and uh, there is certain openness about uh, what... Uh, and I think the scale itself also is important uh, there is, of course, uh, the density of population which of uh, Bombay with very uh, few such opportunities, which I also is important. But I think overall, I think uh, like a small city like Jaipur has uh, 450 open spaces like this or formal parks as parks. under the management of Jaipur Municipal Corporation or uh, Jaipur Development Authority both combined. So these 450 parks would have adequate population around. And of course, these are uh, not really managed. Uh, and, and there are, of course, these uh, stereotypes of uh, it being used for only very specific purpose, which is uh, basically uh, uh, driven by uh, government preferences rather than uh, communities' own uh, articulation of uh, their requirements. So I think uh, there is, uh, across India, especially in the modern development, uh, we see a, a lot of things happening naturally uh, in open spaces and heritage areas. But I think uh, in uh, especially the modern uh, layouts and developments, there is a need to infuse this, uh, you know, spirit, uh, which is so, so unique to uh, Shivaji Park. The main point would also be another two things. One is multiplicity of activities and constantly the park being constantly used by somebody or the other that that in turn uh, results in more attracting more people. That is one thing. And second, uh, the mo mostly the parks, most other parks are fenced off. And uh, this is that is the difference here where the Shivaji Park Katta and how the active interface actually invites more people to come in. I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah, very rightly said, you know, I think uh, the blurring of the boundaries is very important. You know, the Katta that you're talking about is a very unique feature. We don't find such kind of uh, things, uh, you know, uh, in most of the parks. So it's very important that the space has a very inviting and 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 the fact that it is the kata is running all around it makes the space quite democratic in the sense that it is inviting it's, it's not the formal entry only which 
you know, certain people or you know, a sense of you know uh, control comes in when we are talking about a boundary wall and a and an entry gate. And it's also interesting to see, despite a boundary wall, the space is well maintained, and you know the the, the corporation is take, making you know enough efforts to uh, maintain the space and keep it as such. And you know, otherwise. Uh, one could have also seen barriers coming uh, up on the Katta itself. I think that's the spirit of the place which has been maintained both by the community who is uh, taking responsibility of maintaining it and the corporation as well. So Juhi, you also talked about, you know, one very interesting thing about in your initial slides about the Mahim Woods and how this space was actually part of a larger uh, urban green space and how this now evolved, eventually evolved into a Shivaji park. So um, I, I would like to know your views on how urban parks can be used as a platform to talk about the story of urbanization and climate change. What kind of activities or what kind of you know, uh, other things which can be done with such spaces to bring out the importance and essence of uh, these inclusive spaces? I think uh, Shivaji Park made me made me understand that uh, that it is so important to have such an open breathing space within the city for myself uh, that I felt that every every place and every citizen should be able to have access to such a space in every city. So uh, that that was one thing. Uh, of course, with respect to climate change. Uh, yeah, the, there, there, there need to be more such public spaces that come across into the city. And um, if, if, if there are more activities uh, planned, not planned, but if you design the public space in a way that you have, uh, you have greens, you have activity and opportunity for people to come and use that space, there will, automat there will be demand for these kind of public spaces. So um, there definitely needs the need to be more such public spaces in the city, more such open spaces within the city. Uh, yeah, because at the moment, if you see, uh, Mumbai has a like a per capita open space of one square meter per person, and that is very low as compared to various other cities like New York and uh, and London and cities of comparable densities. So um, I think there should there need to be more such public spaces in the city anyway. Uh, but it's 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 real estate and the, the developer lobby that that comes in for profit that because of which these kind of spaces are not further more, uh, incorporated in development plans but yes i think that there should be more such public spaces also you know uh, what do you think about you know having a diversity of these uh, green spaces because usually uh, when we are talking about new development we are just creating parks but i think green spaces go beyond parks there are different kinds of you know uh, urban forest areas or you know areas in which you can actually connect people to the natural topography and a natural uh, you know uh, that should of the place. that that should also there. So so Shivaji Park success is mm -hmm. based on the multiplicity of activities. But Sanjay Gandhi National Park is something else. So that is giving another kind of uh, a breather of a, of of it being the lungs of Mumbai city uh, to to uh, the city. So if you actually reduce that, uh, that's going to not be sustainable in the in the long run of course there need to be a diversity of public of pub, pub, these kind of open spaces uh, shivaji park is 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 unique in that way because it it acts as a neighborhood level as well as a city level open space and um, it's different because it has all these activities happening at one place so there's of course like a convergence happening but yes there need to be different types of public open spaces yeah yeah i think uh, the key uh, takeaways from your you know uh, your story and Sakshi's story is that you know the space is as you talked about you know the eyes on the on the street which you know it is very important for any public space to be inviting plus also be safe for the people so that everybody you know people across all ages feel uh, you know comfortable to be in that space and to enjoy that 
individual space, bubble space of theirs and also try to, you know, connect and strike conversations with new people. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jui and Sakshi, for your wonderful stories. Thank uh, you so much for having us, ma'am. Yeah. I will now share the screen uh, for uh, the next session. Yeah, uh, the next play story session titled The Slum and the Sacred Cave, Jogeshwari, Mumbai, is scheduled for 5th December 2021 from 5 p.m. onwards. Our play storyteller for the session, Ms. Chaitra Bilkar, will be taking us to Jogeshwari Caves, tucked away within a dense slum community in Northwest Mumbai, and share her memories and experiences with us. The place expert for the session, Mr. Himanshu Burte, will explore the sacred and the mundane as social spaces of coexistence amidst change and conflict. Stay, uh, so stay tuned for our upcoming play story. I would now like to thank each one of you for your patronage to the Festival of Places. Uh, do visit our website www.indiaheritagehub.org for more engaging content. You can also support and participate in our multiple initiatives and programs of CATS by volunteering your skills and supporting us financially. You can write to us at info at catsindia.org. Uh, so look forward to meeting all of you again, same time, uh, same place uh, on 5th of December. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good evening. Thanks, Urvashi. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sakshi, and thanks, Nidhi.